Hello everyone. In today's tutorial we are going to discuss about three main topics. They are various ways to defining the name of the cell ranges, the indirect function, and we will apply this idea to make a familiar drop down menu interface. What is the defined name of a cell? Simply, the range of cells converted into a name so that it will be easy to understand and remember. This will make more convenience for us while developing formulas. For example, I will assign a name to these five amounts. For this, select the range. And switch to the formula tab. Then click, define name, button. At this time Excel automatically grabs the title of the field to name range. Press OK to complete the naming step. You can also enter other names manually. Another way to define the name which is much easier to manage. Select the range again. And go to the upper left corner of the worksheet. Directly enter the name you want to define. For example, like, amount. Then press enter to OK. Let us see this example. If I want to get the total of these 5 numbers. Enter the sum function then, select the total range that we want to add. But we have defined a name for this range earlier as amount. Instead of selecting ranges manually, just enter first few letters of the defined name, I will enter like A, M. Now select the defined name from the drop down. You can find out the results right away. Let us look at another example. This time I am going to use COUNTIF function, to find out how many items are greater than $2000. Then I can also enter the amount to represent the range of the data. Then enter greater than 2000 as the condition. And you can calculate the correct answer. Excel for the name function it also provides a convenient management tool it's called the name manager. Open the name manager window from the formulas tab. In this dialog box we can modify the name of the range through the edit button and the cell it refers to. If we no longer need this name you can also click the delete button to remove it. Ok let's look at the next topic called indirect function. The word indirect itself showing us the meaning of this function. We can call the cell content indirectly by using this function. Ok, let's take a look at this example. There are two clues in this worksheet respectively point to the cells where the contents may exist. I first use the indirect function based on the location recorded in clue 1 which is in cell F4. Next, I will refer to another clue it directs us to the F5 cell. So. The function indirect simply return the contents from the cell address that we have target. Clues to the indirect function can also come from different cells. For example, if I split the F5 of clue 2 into two fields. So when I recreate the formula, I can use the AND symbol to combine these two letters together. Also, you will get the same result in this way. Ok, let's take a look at the end. How to apply the defining name, learn today, and indirect function to make a multi-layer drop-down menu. The action I need to achieve that, if I choose the region name. Further use the menu next to choose relevant salesperson name in contrast. Same time, if I choose south region, the assigned salesperson name also to be updated immediately. This is called multiple drop-down menu. Ok, let's first look at the first menu on the left. Due to the fixed content of this menu, there are only two items, north and south. So, it's very simple in setting. I just switch to the data tab. Then click the data verification button. In the dialog box appear I will put the type of information set as, list. And the content source of the list, I assigned it to the two titles north and south then click, ok. In this way, we can use the button on the right side of the field to choose the region name. As for the menu content of salesperson name, it depends on the type of region we choose. So we can use the indirect function to treat cell B3 as a clue. You can get the name of the person in the form. Of course, before that we must define the dependent salesperson name ranges for both north and south region. So I select the table where the region is located. Go to the formulas tab. And click create from selection. This function can quickly intercept the title as the range name. And because this title comes from the leftmost column of the table. So in the dialog, I keep only the leftmost column checked. Then click OK. Now we have defined the dependent ranges for both regions. 
In this way we can define the dependent cell ranges quickly and easier. Finally, I select the salesperson field. And click data verification in the data tab. In the new window, I set the data type to list. And the source of the data, I use the indirect function to get text clues from cell B3. Then click OK. Let's test the result of the setting. When the B3 column is displayed as north, the drop-down menu on the right will follow this clue to show the north region salesperson name. And when I switch the region name to south, the drop-down menu of the salesperson can also be updated immediately. I hope this method is convenient for you to create your own multiple drop-down list. Also please watch my previous video on multiple drop-down tutorial with conditional formatting application. Ok we have done it for today. I hope this tutorial was helpful, and if you have found this video helpful, like us and subscribe to receive more videos from SD Motion. Watch more videos that help you use Excel quick and easy. Thanks for watching. See you soon in the next video.